This is Tattoo Overview. And uh, last time on our last episode, we talked a little bit about how ink really gets into skin. We talked about how uh, it works through a vacuum rather than pressing ink into skin. So continuing with that line of thought, let's uh, dive into how tattoos age in the skin. We all know that a fresh tattoo looks beautiful and the colors all look exactly like they do uh, when you pour them out of the tube into the ink cap and everything is uh, shiny and new. But then as the tattoo ages, when it comes back healed, very rarely do the healed colors look like the fresh color looked. So to understand what's actually happening when we're looking at healed and aged tattoos and how we can make better decisions in designing our tattoos, let's take the path of a photon of light and follow it as it travels through the skin, hits the particle of ink, and then travels back to our eye just so we get a better understanding of what's actually happening. I'm a photon of light. I'm traveling. How fast am I traveling? Uh, you're traveling at the speed of light. Oh, damn it, I should have known that. <laughs> All right, I'm a, I'm a photon of light traveling at the speed of light, and I am hitting skin, traveling towards a tattoo. What, what do I encounter? Okay, so the first thing is you're gonna hit the oils of the skin, which is gonna create uh, some refraction. So, and also the moisture of the skin. So some of the light will refract. The refracting light is gonna be absorbed by all of the surrounding cells of the skin, which are translucent. So if you think about uh, a glass of water, when you shoot a uh, flashlight through the glass, you can see the light bend, the index of refraction inside of the glass. So that happens all throughout the translucent skin skin cells. And when it hits another cell, it refracts more and it refracts more and it refracts more. So it actually creates a glowing effect. So if you imagine the light having a force, each time that it travels deeper and deeper and deeper into the skin, it loses some energy until it hits the tattoo pigment and then it makes its way back up where it loses more and more and more energy. So the pathway from the photon itself or the source or the receptor, your eyeball, all the way through the skin, all the way back out, you're gonna have some energy loss. And the energy loss is measured in wavelengths of light or colors of light, because wavelengths translate into colors. So you can actually calculate how much or what colors of light will be absorbed by the skin. And then knowing what colors of light will be absorbed by the skin gives you a very precise measurement represented by the colors that are received by your eyeball. So the value and color of the skin cells themselves have an effect on how quickly those wavelengths fall out or no? Yeah, they do. So there's a base level that you can see everybody shares. So you can calculate that there's wavelengths of light that will be absorbed by skin, irregardless of your skin tone. And then you have to start adding on the cell diameters. As people get darker, the, the cells that make our skin look darker actually get much, much bigger. So the, the, the cells of a darker skinned person are physically larger than the cells in my skin? Yes, physically larger. And the refraction becomes different on those. And as it refracts, it absorbs more or less light. All right, so let me ask you about a tattoo that I did several years ago on a a young girl, her complexion was kind of an olive color, and I did uh, a, a lot of water, and I used kind of a, a bright teal or turquoise going down into like a mint green on the lighter side in her skin. And it looked fantastic when it was fresh, and I saw her later on, and it was dingy, for lack of a better term, and kind of splotchy. Uh, I know that the saturation was solid, but it kind of red as splotchy. Why did that happen? The layers of skin as they heal up don't distribute themselves evenly. It's like a static pattern. And the trick is, is to say, what is the base skin tone of this person? And what wavelengths of light would be on the other side, essentially, of a color wheel, because those are the ones that are gonna give me the problem. The complementary color. Com complementary uh, colors, yep, absolutely. The, the next thing you need to ask yourself, the human skin will shift either to the blue side or to the red side. And is this person shifting blue or red? And her situation, she was shifting red. So that's where you had the interference in the teal blue. So that means that as the wavelengths of light go down, you, you'll know what the absorption rate is. The wavelengths of light that are coming back are half of that. So the complementary interference will actually be double the amount. So the illusion is, is that you have something that's splotchy just because the cells that are refracting all those photons of light are actually more sensitive to that base color, that complementary color. So it's, it's, it's similar to uh, 
if I were mixing paint or mixing inks and I mix complementaries, how they neutralize each other right. in the in the tube or on the paintbrush, right? Yeah, what makes it tricky is you have to know what that initial absorption is. So the initial absorption of all human skin, if you look at it, there's spikes. There's one that happens on the yellow side and there's this big area of green light that gets absorbed. And then you have a little spike on the blue side. So the safest colors are gonna be the red, but that doesn't mean then I'm gonna be able to see all of the reds, which is sort of misleading. It just means that the furthest end of the red, which is a really narrow band, is gonna come back pretty clear on human skin. But the dangerous bits are gonna be around the blue and the green area. Again, you have to look at the person's base pigmentation, but if you were just gonna say in general terms, it would be that, that area, that greenish area, is the one that you have to worry about. But it's gonna be different for each color, so you have to say, well, how much green is in that color, or how close does it shift to the green? in relationship to the base tone. It sounds like it's getting pretty scientific and, and kind of difficult for tattooers to perceive just by glancing at someone or, you know, especially when you're, the temperature of the light in your studio could affect all this. Is there, um, are there any tools or is there any kind of, uh, any, any approach that would help tattooers make those decisions? Definitely, it's 3D rendering applications and all the great technological tools that people have for video game technology and visualization, those are all based on physics. So those physics engines are really good ways to, to try to figure some of this stuff out without having to run trials on human beings. The answers will come back for this skin type group, these colors or this color as appropriate, or it's gonna read the best really under all the different lighting conditions, including full spectra sunlight. Uh, and you can make better decisions that way. So one, one color does not fit all skin tones, which I think all tattooers know. But the reason why and what the advantages and the disadvantages are, that's where it becomes a little bit tricky. So you can say, I've got someone who's very pale and someone who's olivey, and there's a really big difference in between the two. So you would have you know, optimal color selections for each one of that, those yeah. skin types. Does it make sense to limit Color palettes, uh, are there ideal color palettes for each specific skin tone? Uh, can you simplify those things or is it, is it super complex? It's complex, but that's the great thing is you can compute it. So computers can help you discover the answer. The trick is to get everybody to have a standard way to classify skin types. Um, assuming that you can get all tattooers to agree or adopt a skin type color index, then you'll end up with something like six to seven colors. That'll be the optimal colors uh, that'll work in tattooing. They'll, they'll read the best, they'll be very predictable. That, that doesn't limit the artist because you can still mix those colors and go a little warmer, a little cooler, but you'll know those are your anchor points and um, you'll have a much more limited color palette but a much more predictable color palette. Are the six colors different depending on your skin tone? Um, six distinct hues, and then the values can be augmented. Uh, the, the black and the white would be neutral, so you'd have the blacks and the whites mm -hmm. uh, separate from the six, but six distinct hues. Okay, so a lot of tattooers are gonna be caught off guard by that, because so many of us use these giant color palettes with you know nine peaches and four greens. Uh, but what you're saying, uh, essentially, is that all of those things wash out over time, and the, uh, the six ideal colors will stand the test of time and these other things maybe will not. Can you prove that? We can prove it by taking either an existing tattoo and the color of the tattoo, running it through a computer simulation, and then comparing the two results. That's the easiest way to do it. We can generate some of those images and we can put them out there for tattoo artists to look and compare with their healed results. So in a, like in a practical application, could you photograph a client and run kind of a predictive scenario. Yeah, we can do that and we can age it into the future. So I can say at year one, it looks like this. At year two, it looks like this. But yeah, you can get very predictable results that way. Are there any ways to amplify that healed wavelength 
of lights. Hey, I'd like to give a special shout out to our great friends at S8 Tattoo. Click the link in the description below to check out all of their fantastic tattoo products and be sure to use the code FIRESIDE at checkout to get 10% off. While you're surfing the wild, wild webs, you might as well swing over to firesidetattoo.com and check out all of our online courses and workshops. Maybe pick up a t-shirt from our sweet merch store. Finally, I would like to invite you to subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date with all of the goings on and be notified when new videos drop each week. Thank you so much for supporting what we do and we'll catch you next time.